Hello friends, this video on microorganisms, friend and foe, part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the next disease that we are going to talk about is malaria. So it is again a very common disease which often occurs due to from mosquito bite and that is why you, you would have often heard that whenever on your television there is a news coming up that these days malaria is spreading everywhere. So you would have heard your moms and your parents saying that okay, start using mosquito nets. Uh, so we should take some precautions against mosquitoes. So let us see what is malaria and how it happens. So the pathogen which is responsible for malaria is a protozoa, plasmodium. Now there are many different stains of plasmodium which can cause malaria. That is plasmodium vivax, plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium malaria. So these are all the different stains of plasmodium which are capable of causing malaria. How they enter inside our body? through bite of female anophilus mosquito. So this is the specific type of mosquito which acts as a carrier of this pathogen. So how it carries it? So if this, if this mosquito bites you, what happens? It inserts or it injects the pathogen inside your body. So that is how this pathogen enters your body and that is why we try to keep ourselves safe from mosquitoes when malaria is spreading everywhere. So female, female anophilus mosquito acts as transmitting agent because it transmits the pathogen from one person to another. So it is the transmitting agent. So therefore, let us suppose if this person, if this lady is suffering from malaria, that means inside the body of this female there are protozoa plasmodium. So now if the mosquito bites this female, what it will do, it will suck in some protozoa and then when it goes back and bites somebody else then it can inject the same pathogen so that means it can transmit the pathogen from one person to another and it acts as a transmitting agent so what happens in malaria is the red blood cells get ruptured so that is why it becomes very severe in certain cases so if it is diagnosed at a very initial stage then the treatment is quite uh, simple but if it becomes too severe then sometimes it can actually become fatal because the red blood cells gradually keep on getting ruptured. So let us quickly look at the life cycle of the malarial parasite. So looking at this life cycle of malarial parasite, so which is the malarial parasite? Parasite is the plasmodium. So here if you look at the life cycle of plasmodium, you will see that plasmodium actually have two hosts. So half of its life cycle, it lives inside the human body. The remaining half of its life cycle, it lives inside the female anophilus mosquito. So here if you see, let us start with the stage one. So if you see here, the mosquito bites a person. So let us say this is the person. So now as soon as the mosquito bites a person, it injects the parasite. That is it injects the plasmodium considering the mosquito had the plasmodium in it. So now as soon as it injects the plasmodium, where does it go? It goes to the human liver cell and then inside if you see, this is the parasite and the parasite starts to multiply inside the human body. Now these parasites will over a period of time, you see, it is spending all its time here. So it will gradually form the gametocytes. That is the gametes will be formed from the uh, plasmodium. So the plasmodium will also, it is a parasite, it is a living organism. So it also wants to multiply. So when it forms its gametocyte, again, what will happen if some other mosquito is biting this person, what happens? It can take in these gametocytes and the same mosquito then can go and bite somebody else. So that is how it gets transmitted from one person to another. Now let us look at one complete cycle of plasmodium. Now mosquito bites an infected person. So let us say the mosquito has bitten an infected person who already has plasmodium inside his body. So what will the mosquito do? It will take up the gametocytes. So here if you see so the mosquito will take up because it will feed on blood. So it will suck blood at the same time it will take up these gametocytes. So that means what are gametocytes? Gametocytes are those cells which produce gametes. And what are gametes? So let me write it here. 
So gametes are nothing but the sex cells. Right? So the gametes are the sex cells. So gametocytes are those cells which produce the sex cells, which produce gametes. So these gametocytes will be taken in by the mosquito. Now inside the mosquito's body, the gamete formation will take place. So the gametocytes will break to form gametes. These gametes will then form ookinate, it will form oocysts. So basically the gametes will keep on developing itself. It will start growing. So all this development takes place inside the body of the mosquito and finally the sporozoites are formed. So sporozoites are the final form of the gametocytes which were taken in, right? So this mature sporocytes, they are stored in the salivary gland of the mosquito. Now the mosquito goes and bites a normal person. So that time what happens? The sporozoid which was stored in the salivary gland, it is injected into that person. Now inside that person the same sporozoid so here you can see sporozoid so this is injected into a new person now the sporozoid will gradually develop inside the liver cell and finally the it will cause a rupturing of the rbcs so that is when we say that malaria has occurred because rupture of rbc is the symptom of malaria and again gametocytes will be formed and then again these gametocytes will be taken up by some other mosquito which will bite this person and this cycle will continue. So this is like a continuous cycle. So this is how the plasmodium spends half of its lifetime inside the body of mosquito where it forms the sporozoids and half of its life inside the human body where it forms the gametocytes. Now, you really don't need to look at the steps which lead to the formation of sporozoids or which lead to the formation of gametocytes because at this stage, you will not be able to understand what is sporozoid, what is gamete, what is gametocytes. You will study this in your higher classes. So basically, plasmodium parasite has two hosts. One is human beings and the other one is mosquito. So now let us look at the symptoms of malaria. High fever, chills, headache, body ache, nausea, vomiting. So these are some of the symptoms of malaria. Now chills means whenever you get fever, you actually tremble a lot. And this is a very common symptom of a person suffering from malaria. How can it be treated? It is normally for, for any treatment, the diagnosis has to be there before the treatment is started because until and unless proper diagnosis is done, the treatment can, is not possible. So it is diagnosed using blood tests and liver function tests because a lot of changes happens in the liver. As I said, the RBC is rupture. That's because the sporozoids which enter inside the human body, they directly go into the liver cells. So if some tests are done looking at the functioning of the liver, uh, it can be very easily diagnosed whether the person is suffering from malaria or not. So once diagnosed, it can be treated with anti-malarial drugs. So there are anti-malarial drugs available in the market, so they can treat it completely. So now we will talk about cholera. So for cholera, again, the pathogen is a bacteria called Vibrio cholerae. So that's why the name is cholera. So how the pathogen enters our body through contaminated food and water. So typhoid and cholera, both these diseases happens through contaminated food and water. So here the pathogen releases a toxin in the intestine. Now whatever disease happens through food and water, there the impact is on the intestine. That's because when we eat food, it directly goes into the stomach and from there it goes to the intestine. So here also some poisonous substances are released by Vibrio cholerae inside the intestine. So symptoms of cholera is water diarrhea, that is loose motions, vomiting, dehydration, weakness, muscle cramps, thirst. So if you see the first three symptoms, they are all related to digestion. Now when you your food is not getting digested properly, what will happen? You'll have loose motion. So most of the things will get ejection, will become a part of ejection. It will be thrown out of the body. So vomiting where the food is not getting digested you just vomit it out now when a lot of vomiting is happening a lot of water is also going out of your body as a result the body gets dehydrated so there is lack of water inside the body 
treatment oral or intravenous solutions to compensate for dehydration because dehydration can become fatal correct amount of water should always be present inside our body and if that is not there that can be extremely dangerous so the first step that should be done for treating cholera is that if somebody is having diarrhea and vomiting is to compensate for the water loss and for that purpose oral or intravenous solutions are given inside the body sometimes oral solutions don't work because as soon as somebody drinks fluid they immediately vomit it out so in that case intravenous solution works that is solutions are directly injected into the veins of the body extreme cases can be treated with antibiotic medication however in not so extreme cases antibiotics are not required but yes antibiotic can treat it because it is a bacterial infection thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again